Hey guys, so it's a very windy day. I said that yesterday. So I don't know how the audio might come across. If not, I'll have to do a voiceover. But I have my clips out here because I am going to, I showed how I have a lot of tomatoes that have grown so much as well as some squash that I need to train to connect to the cattle panel. So I have my clips here. I'm looking for my, looking for my stand. I have my clips so I can start clipping. Specifically, I saw this one squash right here. I think it's, this is either the Kakuzi or the Trombonzino. So this squash right here, you can see how it has fell over, but it should be going, climbing up. So as soon as I find, and it has these tendrils to hold on. If you're wondering, this is not uh, any kind of disease. This is natural in some squash plants. You can see this one doesn't really have it. But sometimes when you do have powdery mildew, mildew it would look powdery. This isn't powdery at all. So, and then this one started growing out, and it could be growing up, so I'm going to have to clip, I'm going to use these clips that I got off Amazon to clip them as soon as I find. I need to find my stand for you guys. I was out here just checking on uh, to see if I saw any new seedlings popping up, and I did see that we had some more corn popping up, so... I did water or had my son water yesterday so I'm going to give it some more time as far as the seedlings go to pop up. I saw another squash that had popped up so that's good. It tells me that um, you know the seeds didn't dry out, that they're still viable. Oh here's the tripod. Um, so I'm going to give it some more time like I said but the pole beans that I have planted I saw that they're doing very good no problem at holding on to the cattle panel so you can see they're doing really really good at wrapping across on both sides of the cattle panel like it's already up to my belly up well my chest really on some of them I do have some that are a little wayward, but for the most part, they are wrapping around by themselves. This will be my first year. I planted a trombonzino here and a kakuzi because the kakuzi did so good for me last year. So I'm really excited to uh, try it again. But this is my first year um, growing the trombonzino, so I'm really excited. I don't know which one is which because I didn't label it, but I know that's what I planted here. And I'm just going to add these clips on, if I can get them. So they just clip like that to kind of help train the squash to go up. And then once it gets to hang, it will grab on by itself. It's so super bright outside. It's midday. But I was busy this morning and when I got home, I came right out here. So it's probably 
really really bright on camera so i apologize but this is the time i had available to come out here so it's gonna work fine I just broke this uh, I just broke this branch off it had a two liter and I was gonna leave it just because it had all these flowers on it but I kind of just bent it too far and it broke While I'm here clipping on plants, I am taking off the lower branches, especially if it's like this one had grew really, really big into a two liter only because this one's already growing into a two liter up here. So kind of just taking them off and taking off any diseased leaves. I'm not doing like a perfect job because I'm really just trying to get them uh, standing up but and I'll come back in and have to prune but for now I am just getting them clipped on. So I'm so glad I'm doing this because I just found this right here. I had a bunch of these in the fall on my tomato plants. They are the tomato, the tomato army worms and they will eat, let's see. I can get it off Ooh. they up oh, they fell where did it go they will eat the t so many holes in your tomato I lost it I can't believe it but I'm so glad like I said that I'm out here fidgeting with these tomatoes and getting them tied up because early prevention is always the best measure when trying to uh, prevent and that's the first one when trying to prevent uh, things, bugs and diseases. It's like catching it early. So I'm going to have to be back out here. I'll probably end up spraying this with BT um, now that I know that the caterpillars are out. And you might be saying the caterpillars have already been out. If you've been following me a while, you saw that I had an infestation of caterpillars, but those caterpillars weren't eating my tomatoes they were eating um like fruit trees and fruit bearing things like roses and well roses aren't fruit bearing but they were eating my roses and blueberries and stuff like that um and leaving my tomatoes alone but now that i have these horn i'm not hornworms why do i keep wanting to call them hornworms now that i have these black army um black army caterpillars that's completely different because they will eat um your tomatoes so I definitely want to get them taken care of yay that looks so much better they're so big already still gonna have to prune them this wasn't is, isn't as bad I'm gonna check on this one row right here I do see one right here leaning forward so I'm gonna get that I was supposed to be planting winter squash in this bed but every time I look at it and just see how the bachelor buttons uh seeded themselves from last year it makes me not want to pull them out and just like let them live their life as long as possible just because it looks beautiful uh like there's so many buds this is way more than even I got last year and so it just looks too pretty to not I only have one pink one it looks too pretty to to pull it up as I'm walking to the hoop house because I do have to chill the tomatoes in here I do, I do want to say I um I forgot to mention in yesterday's vlog 
when I was mentioning about the uh, mushrooms. I was just asking what, like if anybody knew what type they were. I know that mushrooms are a sign of good soil. Um, and I did not let my dog eat <laughs> the mushrooms. I had my girls take it from, from Jade. But thank you everybody who uh, commented. The mushrooms are still safe inside the garden. The rest of them are okay. So I started in here, showed you how I was trellising one of the tomatoes, but as you can see, I have two right here that are doing the gangster lane. So I have my, what is this called? Hmm, I don't know, netting, no, tomato trellising stuff. <laughs> and, oops, these had dried off. Let's see. Looks like those dried, tomatoes blossom will dry out. When it's like above 95 degrees so i need to do a good job at making sure this stays open because i do have the shade cloth here which is making it way cooler in here and i do have some tomatoes already starting to form in here and some down there as well but i sometimes i walk past here and i see that the greenhouse door had blue clothes and so that could definitely make it get hot in here even though they have there is a I cut like a back window screen back there um, but just having the front door open to let it the air blow through would be so much better okay if I didn't have my the shade cloth in here I wouldn't have even be, been able to be in here right now because the Sun was so intense in here okay I've shown how I did this before by taking the rope, tying it to the top, uh, looping it over to the top of the cattle panel, and then tying a knot at the bottom, and using landscape fabric to go into the soil, and so that is what I'm doing right now. That already looks so much better now that I have these five trellised. So if it didn't make sense when I was explaining it, I just basically tied a knot and then used the landscape fabric deep down in there to hold it. And then I'm using these little clips to make sure that they stay clipped on to the trellising. So I hope the visual makes sense. And I'm going to do the same thing for the back, but right now they're fine. So I'm just going to worry about the ones in the front because I am on a time. I'm on a little bit of a time crunch because I have to leave soon. So today I'm going to just worry about getting the ones in the front that need it the most. And worry about the other ones later on. But I've already just doing this like because this task sometimes i get a little overwhelmed when i am doing when i have like huge tasks that i know or a lot of tasks at once sometimes i've shared this in a video it makes me uh, not want to do anything or feel like paralyzed i call it analysis paralysis when i have like a huge list and i don't know what to do first or um or the things that I have to do is really boring, so I like skip those and do the things that I think are much fun, more fun for me. Which I know is so bad. I shouldn't do that, but I do. There's something in here. Ugh. I'm so happy to see all of the the beans that have already sprouted in here doing so good Ooh. 
Oops. Man, working with tomatoes, get your hands. I washed my hands, but they're already, when I went and get water, but they're already turning green again. I'm getting ready to head inside. I have all of these tomatoes left over. You can see I'm not doing anything about them besides keeping them alive like I am watering them. Um, but I gave away probably 50 tomatoes and I still have, I want to say this is probably 35 to 40 tomatoes here. And I'm thinking about just finding a place to plant them like in ground, in the soil somewhere and then just like seeing how they how they do like do you survive kind of thing um because they're so big i don't want to see them die i don't need any replacement tomatoes i was keeping them in case i needed to replace any of my tomatoes out in the garden but all of them are doing good all of the ones in the greenhouse are doing good um so yeah i mean i could i'm thinking about i could some options are maybe checking the orchard area and planting them since the ducks were disturbing a lot of the soil for when I planted the ginger and the turmeric. I don't know how much is going to sprout. I only see like very sparingly um, that some have sprouted so I could plant some of them in the orchard area. I could put holes inside of the landscape fabric inside of my garden area. The only reason why I'm hesitant to do that is because once I put those burn those holes in, then I would have to keep tomatoes there every year. Um, and it wouldn't matter if I fill that um, this fence area that I'm talking about with raised beds next year which is my original my original plan was to fill that whole area with the metal raised beds but then I kind of put some in here um which changed the idea so yeah lots of options that I could do with these tomatoes but I'm still processing it all I'm not really sure what I want to do you guys think it's a good idea I wish some of you guys lived closer but like hey free tomatoes let them live but these are all tomatoes that I already have. Like, I already have some of the, like this Arkansas Traveler right here would be good because it's supposed to do good in the humidity. Yeah. Blue Beauty, Mr. Stripey, Japanese Black Truffle, like some peach one right here. I want to plant them. I want to plant all the tomatoes because this year I'm so happy about my tomatoes inside of the garden and inside of this um, inside of this hoop house because last year I only got a couple big tomatoes and this year I want to get like I already see some forming that are really decent size and this year I want to get way more tomatoes because like I've said multiple times I want to be able to can tomatoes only for my tomatoes. I would I don't mind buying some but my goal this year is definitely to be able to can tomatoes from tomatoes that I grew strictly in my garden. So hopefully it's definitely when I've been like sitting down and thinking I'm like this year I'm like this year is so much different than last year when I gardened. Like last year when I gardened I was like I guess because I was trying to get the garden like set up and established and now that it's established uh, so it's going a little different. But every year, I was just thinking about it, even when I saw like that black army worm, every year is different how last year I struggled with a lot of grubs and now like this year, then I had all those caterpillars and <laughs> all over, which praise the Lord that they're gone. But next year I might struggle with something else. I might struggle with, you know, cucumber beetle or just something else, you know? So every year, that's in I hope that encourages you that every year, it's completely different you're never going to stop learning about gardening you're always going to be a learner and learning new things so that's encouraging me right now as i feel like i'm behind i'm like last year i feel like i had the whole garden planted by april and was doing garden tours and this year you know i still have so many beds that are empty and that i have to get planted so i feel behind <laughs> but it's okay i have a long growing season so that was a long jabber at the end of this video, but I will see you guys next time, tomorrow, I guess, when, tomorrow I'm going to try and get in the garden early. I don't think I have anything planned in the morning, so I'm going to try and get out here earlier than, uh, earlier than noon. <laughs> Bye.